One of the best things about being a reseller is that you can seriously diminish the general cost of living for yourself by one, buying everything that you can at thrift stores and two, offsetting the cost of those goods by finding things to resell while you're there to make the stuff that you got for yourself basically free. Most times I actually wind up, I think, making a little bit of money when I go shopping. First thrift store that I stopped at was a Goodwill and I found this pair of shoes for myself that I needed fairly urgently. I needed a wider toe box shoe. They were 15 bucks and they happened to not have any insoles in them so I could just slot mine in. These are customs because your boy has literally 100% flat feet. I have zero degrees in my arches. So it was a sign from the thrift heavens, I think. 15 bucks for a relatively great condition pair of sneakers that would have cost me around 100 new already pretty good, but I was able to blast through the shirt section and find a couple that will bring me enough profit that those will be functionally free after a little bit of time. So I pay for the stuff that I buy with time and labor. Teddy Stratford, I didn't recognize the brand, but this is Seersucker fabric, and we are going into Seersucker season eventually. Really, it's summer is when Seersucker is most desirable. It's very preppy. And this is a weird shirt. It's got a zipper, a working zipper underneath the placket. So this section of it is zippered. The rest of it is buttoned up. The brand is fairly strong based on the sell through numbers. And this should be worth around 30 to 40 bucks. And I got it for eight. Here is a vintage Kahala pullover half button Hawaiian shirt. You find these sometimes. The temptation may be there to call these polo shirts. These are not proper polo shirts, I don't think. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think that those count. It's just kind of a pullover half button shirt. And it has this weird graphic on it. I haven't even looked this up. I just know that this is going to sell for more than 30 bucks. It cost $7. I will definitely make 15 bucks in profit off of those two shirts to cover the costs of the shoes, I will probably come out a little bit ahead. And this may seem like a gimmick, but when you buy 80, 90% of the things that you use in life this way, it adds up, like it does make a big financial difference. Then I stopped at a Salvation Army and I got one of these. It was only a matter of time before I got one of these metal wheeled carts as a fisherman. It cost me 13 and I was not actually able to find anything in that thrift store to offset the cost. I found some shirts, but the condition was not there. However, I stopped in at a Goodwill bookstore that was right around the corner from it. And the Goodwill bookstore definitely more than covered the cost of that thing. First of all, I also picked this up for myself. It's a Ray Bradbury book, A Medicine for Melancholy, I'd never heard of. I read quite a bit of genre lit, as you can see. So that was another dollar. So 14 bucks for those two, including the cart. At that Goodwill bookstore, I found this. I've actually sold this exact book before. It's a Magic the Gathering tie-in novel that is quite rare. This is worth around 40 bucks, even though it's in poor condition. Magic the Gathering has been very kind to me in terms of resale. You would think that that would be the big windfall find but I found this. This is one of the rarest books that I've ever found. It's the third Alpha Centauri tie-in novel. I'm not a big gamer really at all, but I played games when I was a kid and Alpha Centauri is a standout in my memory as an excellent game. And it, it still, I think, has a pretty loyal following. It's like Civilization, but um, kind of a, a sophisticated science fiction rendition of the Civilization games. So I have the first of these novelizations, which is also quite rare and probably worth around 50 bucks or something. This is so rare that there are zero copies available on eBay anywhere. There's one active on Amazon and it costs $400. If you sell used books, Amazon and eBay are decent ways to price, but 
Sometimes with rare books, you have to be more thoroughgoing. So abebooks.com is a good resource, abebooks.com. Abe Books tends to have offerings that are a little cheaper than elsewhere, or, or it's just like a bigger database of used books to pick from. So it gives you a stronger sense of what it's worth. And I just double checked and the lowest price is 400 bucks. So that's probably about what this is worth. I, I am hard pressed even at that price to let this go because never again in my life will I have a shot at owning or reading this book. And there's a non-zero chance that I do actually read this eventually. After that, I stopped at just a standard Goodwill and I found this not quite as valuable. It's an Enya single on CD. It's the Silent Night single. Uh, I'm very fond of Enya and I guess I'm a collector of Enya CDs now. It was a buck. Couldn't say no. Found a few things to cover that exorbitant price of one dollar. I found this book. The Five Books of the Maccabees with Notes from Oxford Press, 1832. This is kind of a vanity published or like cheaply print-on-demand type uh, bound copy of an older book and looks like it's worth nothing at all. This I think was worth like 20 or 30 bucks, somewhere in that range. Uh, probably 20, 20. And I can list this on eBay for around 15. And uh, with the cost of goods only being $1 for this and also being able to ship it media mail, that's some okay profits. I also found two sport coats slash jackets. And at these really overpriced thrift stores like these Goodwills, these are the categories that are good to look at. The, uh, the CDs, DVDs, books, and suits and jackets and t-shirts. Those have the biggest kind of margins of, like you stand the best chance of finding something that's disproportionately valuable in those sections. Because even though these were 13 bucks, which seems like a lot for a thrift store, the, this both jackets are 13 and both are worth well, well, well beyond 13 bucks. Disproportionately valuable. Uh, T-shirts you can get for like $1 to $3 and you can find 20 30 $40 value shirts in there. And the books obviously can be just astronomically disproportionate in their value as I just demonstrated. Okay, so this jacket, that's a houndstooth plaid. It's tan with blue lines in it. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera. I got this because it is apparently, that could be made to measure or it could be bespoke. These are from 2015. There's a date somewhere on these tags. There's the cherished Laura Piana tag that I love so much. Laura Piana is an upscale wool manufacturer. And I tend to pick up anything that I find that's reasonably priced, which I think this is at 13, that is Laura Piana. Even if it's un relatively undesirable brands, like kind of more run of the mill brands, I just have had pretty decent luck flipping Laura Piana. I think 75 is pretty safe for that for what that is. Even if I only flip it for 50, if I ship it out pirate ship, which is uh, priority cubic rate, it will be cheap enough that I'll still be able to turn some decent profit on it. I wouldn't mind flipping that for 50, even though I sourced it for 13. That's a perfectly fine margin for my purposes. Um, and I got another one. It's from the same guy, same deal, all the same factors, except that this is a little bit of an oddball window pane plaid pattern and oddball just because this is not a color combination that I've seen all that often. It's kind of salmon red plaid on the darker brown. It is three button, so two button jackets and suits are much more in demand than three buttons. But again, Laura Piana, it's recent, it's good. Stopped in at a book off, which is a chain of used bookstores slash video game, DVD, CD stores. Um, and I found these. These were two bucks, 50 cents each. Don't know if I'm gonna keep these or if I'm gonna sell them. This is the first three books in the extended Aliens literary universe that is now uh, defunct. And then uh, this Berserker book. And I bought these out of a sense of nostalgia. I used to read these when I was a teenager and uh, they're not very good, but these kind of helped me cut my teeth on science fiction lit, so. I am pretty fond of them. I don't think they're worth all that much. I just, I kind of couldn't say no to this. And I got a Crash Test Dummies CD, The Ghosts That Haunt Me. I had a really great experience with another Crash Test Dummies 
CD that I got from the same book off. That was that day. I got a few things for myself that will be useful or enjoyable. And here's a bag of stuff that I got today. I was just at a farmer's market and there's a thrift store right there. So I kind of popped my head in. I found this and they were running a barb sale or a color sale on the barbs. So this was yellow barb, which means it was 25% off of 10, which is their standard price for men's jackets. And here is the brand. John Barbados. I really like John Barbados suits. There's the tag again inside. And it was just this jacket hanging up. And anytime you find a suit jacket from a desired brand that you know is worth money, always take the jacket if it's not hanging with the pants and you can tell that it belongs to a suit, if it's a suit jacket as opposed to a sport coat or a blazer, which are meant to be worn as standalone pieces, take the jacket over to the pants section while it's still on the hanger and scan it in front of the pants of roughly the same color and see if one of the pairs matches up with the exact color and weave of the fabric. Because sometimes, oh no, that's not them. <laughs> sometimes you find the pants and had I not done that, I never would have spotted these or clocked them as John Barbados because the pants are not branded. They just have this size tag in here. It just happens to be the exact same fabric and you can just tell. It has kind of a black pinstriping. The pinstripes are exactly an identical width part and you can just tell it was cut from literally the same cloth. So. These again were a yellow barb, so 25% off of seven. So I got a John Barbados suit for what, like 12, 13 bucks or something. And that's probably worth over a hundred. I'll probably list it at a hundred just to do a quick flip on it. Got this new with tags pair of um, women's Banana Republic pants. These are a flare leg professional slack and black and they're size eight. So this was 75% off of whatever the list price was or the standard pants price, which I think is like six bucks or something. Banana Republic I don't pick up unless I can get it for really, really cheap or unless it's new with tags like this. This was yellow, so only 25% off, but it's 25% off six. And that's a pretty reasonable price for a men's North Face button up in this weird pattern. I have had spotty luck flipping North Face shirts when they're boring looking, when they're just the standard run of the mill pieces, but something weird like that, I think I should be able to flip for 25 pretty quickly, pretty effortlessly. This is the only thing that I got out of any of this that was truly kind of a risk. I got it because that's the brand, Roan. And I haven't found Roan in months and months and months and months. And it's one of my favorite brands. It does have a corporate, I think biotech or some kind of, oh no, it's a medical thing, company branding on it, which is not ideal. I don't like selling this kind of a thing. The buyer base tends to be very, very, very constricted, much more so than golf courses. Or if it's a known brand, like if this was Coca-Cola or Disney or something like that, it would not be a problem at all. This is a risk. I'm not confident that this will actually flip. And it was full price, so it was, I think, $5. Roan is just such a strong brand. And you can tell Roan often because they have these three little embroidered X's on the shoulder seam on their shirts. Roan is a, an athletic, athleisure wear type brand that's very close to Lululemon. I have even better luck selling it than I do with Lululemon. So I think if I price that fairly low, Someone who just likes Roan polos, maybe who will work out in it or something, will pick that up. That's the hope. That is my favorite way to shop. It's a fairly like clean conscience way to do it. And it's a fun way uh, to buy stuff because you get the thrill of the hunt and then you don't have to really feel bad about squandering money on stuff that you don't really need. And I like having stuff that I don't really need. Uh, and I don't like spending money on stuff. So this is a perfect compromise. Hope that this gives you something. Thanks for watching.